Welcome back to the Sunday Footy Show. Not very often you get to interview your idols, but when it comes to just dentistry, <laughs> this guy is my idol. I mean, he's just... Uh, go on, Billy. I, I can't intro. You, you intro. Oh, one of the uh, great men and done well, and he'll be playing in a grand final in two weeks, and Devon Meadows will be going berserk right now. That's where he's from. James Harms, the son of Tony. Uh, welcome, Harmsy, and well done. Congratulations. How are you feeling right now, mate? <laughs> Thanks, Bill, and uh, cheers to Trumpers. Um, <laughs> nah, I feel pretty good, mate. I'm um, really excited. Um, yeah, it's over the moon. Uh, still can't believe it, really. I'm still pinching myself, so, yeah. So what, what was it like? I mean, you know, the euphoria, obviously, after the actual game, then you get back to the hotel room. The phone, was it just going completely <laughs> gangbusters and probably still is? Yeah, the phone's been going off uh, for the last uh, 24 hours. Um, obviously, all the family and friends back home that weren't there, but um, all the D supporters, we uh, we want to thank them a lot. They've um, they've been huge, and yeah, we love their support. James, the preparation. So you've had you played a game, you win the final, you have a break, you win another final, you get another break. So you know, I know you got uh, Darren Burgess there at your club. So how hard do you go, and when do you go hard, just to make sure you don't taper off mm. with two breaks in the space of four weeks? Yeah, it's been a bit of a different um, preparation for us. Uh, last week, we had a really good session and, uh, you know, there's two weeks leading into the granny, we'll have a big session next Friday and um, kind of like a bit of match team and, um, yeah, we'll take it from there. We'll obviously have a bit of a rest now, a couple of days off and um, reset. But, uh, yeah, as I said before, really excited and just can't wait to get into it. You played the Dogs twice this year. One at Marvel where I thought you stopped their run and carry out of the back line. And the second one was the MCG where Marcus Bontempelli put on a masterclass. I think it was his best performance of the year. Yourself, sometimes you go to players, whether it be Bontempelli, McRae's going well at the moment, Liberatore. Can you see yourself going to one of them? Um, I'm not too sure. At the moment, I've been playing a bit of half forward. So I reckon Jack Viney might get the job if we do tag someone. Um, and I'm not too sure who it will be. Goody will have someone in mind, I'm, I'm sure of that. Harmsy, what's the balance between enjoying the moment, which you deserve to do, but also knowing that there's a, a bigger one in a couple of weeks' time, and you probably haven't experienced that before, but are the players conscious that your job's not done? Yeah, definitely, mate. I mean, we've got to enjoy the moment and um, soak it all in, but at the end of the day, as you said, the job's not done, and, you know, there's one more game to go, so... Um, you know, the boys are all really keen and I'm um, really excited to go for it. James, we spoke before about the selflessness of this Melbourne outfit. I mean, you personally epitomise that aspect uh, of it. Um, your own form on the on the Friday night's just gone too. It, it fitted in with that way that way you play and the way your team plays, always doing something for each other. I mean, the, the pressure acts that you're involved in were, were profound. You managed to, to kick that goal, as you can see early in the in the piece there, and uh, had, had a role in other score involvement. Just the, the mindset that each player takes into uh, into a Melbourne game of footy, if you could, please. Yeah, I guess at the start of the year, we all um, sat down and, um, you know, we, we wanted to stand for something and it was to be a, a really good team and to be a good team, you've got to play a role for the team and that's what everyone's trying to do, you know. We go out there each each week and just try to play a role and, um, yeah, try to do that the best we can. Damo, can I ask you, and I'm, I'm, I'm keen for James's take on this as well, who will have the bulk of the support in WA? Now, you're, you're, you're a Perthite now, for all intents and purposes. Who do you reckon will get the bulk of the support, Melbourne or the Bulldogs? Um, it, it, I honestly can't tell, TJ. I say that because the Perth media felt that there was going to be a more Geelong support on Friday night just gone, and yet once that game started, the, the Melbourne component to the crowd was, was overwhelmingly more loud. Um, I don't know what the arrangements are with regards to the, the locals who support both teams. I don't know how many outsiders are going to be coming in, but Melbourne's got the score on the board already when it comes to, to that aspect of it, given what they uh, displayed uh, volume-wise on, on the Friday just gone. James, would you expect to have the bulk of the support? I mean, it, it would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, I hope so. I mean, uh, on the weekend, I heard the, uh, the chants of Gorney singing out when he kicked his fourth goal, so... Um, yeah, I'm sure there's heaps of D supporters here and, um, I mean, they'll all, they're all be really excited and hopefully we can get, fill, it, fill it out and uh, get a big crowd. Now, Froffy's May, how is he? Uh, no, and don't say I haven't spoke to him, I haven't seen him. Come on, Harmsy, tell us. How's he going and what's he do this week? 
No, he's gone all right. He's all good. Um, he'll be right to go. Just a little bit tight in the hammy, so um, the coaches took him off, which is a bit of precaution. Um, you know, he's, he's a key player to our team, and um, you know we didn't want him risking any more damage. So uh, he'll be he'll be fine to go, and uh, he'll be around. Hey, Harmsy, I want to know who, who demands. You know, you talk about playing a role and. Yeah, the effort that you get from Melbourne every week, you know what you're going to get. You're going to get a fierce contest. Your pressure's outstanding. So who do, is Simon Goodwin and the coaches or the leadership group and senior players? Like, who, who demands that? Yeah, because you can talk as much as you like. A lot of teams have trademarks and they just go in one ear and out the other a lot. But obviously it's sunken in and players are playing as well as they ever have in their lives. So who demands that more, the players or the coaches? Um, a bit of both. I mean... As I said before, at the start of the year, we wanted to stand for something and that was to be the best team we can and um, everyone has a role to play in that. And uh, obviously the coaches, you know, they stand by that as well. But, um, I mean, it's it's driven by the players. We, um, we drive each other and um, I think that's what's making us a great team. Hey, well done, Harmsy. Thanks for coming on. We've got Lou's prize pack for you, mate. A dozen Callaway Chrome Soft Golf Balls there. And the Odyssey uh, Tour Towel, that's all for you. We've got the Travis Matthew caps. There's four of those caps there, buddy. When you win the grand final, that'll look good. The Aquila shoes and clothing. Oh, the Aquila's magnificent. They've been um, great sponsors of ours. The Bar Fridge from Bar Fridges Australia. Oh, fill them up with some froffies uh, when you win. And thanks to Bar Fridges Australia. Rick's Eyewear, use the code word CHOMPERS at rickseyewear.com.au for a 20% discount if you don't buy an umpire. Platform 28, you can take the dial there when it's open, up and about. It's one of the great restaurants. And AMFX, a fire pit, thanks to our good friends at AMFX. 100% Australian made. Good luck, uh, James. Thank you very much, boys. Thanks for having me. Uh, Harms, do, do you room with someone or do you room to yourself there? No, nah, room to myself, thank mm. God. Um, <laughs> good to have a bit of, bit of privacy. I've been the hubby, I mean, you're amongst each other all the time, so it's good to have your own room. <laughs> very neat. You're a good housekeeper, mm. mate. Those beds are, oh, you know, perfection and the bedside tables and everything. Ah, oh, thank you, Chompers. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, mate. All the very best, and hopefully we're talking to you in a couple of weeks. James Harms joining us. Yes, yeah, boys. Thank you. Good boy. You know, it's um, it's so good, obviously, to have uh, Melbourne and the Bulldogs in the grand final, but it just reinforces the position we're in here in Victoria at the moment, doesn't it? When these next two weeks should just be party time oh, yeah. in imagine, this town, in this state. Imagine if it was at the G. Yeah, oh, oh, mate. I'd mate say, uh, but imagine, Melbourne and the dogs. But you've got everything covered. You've got Melbourne, the drought. You've got yeah, the Bulldogs yeah. doing it the hard way. And it's, um, oh. it's just, I, I think it's a real kick in the guts. I mean, even if people aren't interested in football, yeah. they couldn't help but get carried up and away with the euphoria that the, the next two weeks would have posed. And it's just um, very, very sad. Oh, it's great for Western Australia. Yeah. Great for Perth. Who are the old faces we're going to really? see? They've inherited it. Who are we going to see this week? The old faces come out for the dogs and uh, also Melbourne. for the Ds. Dougie Hawkins. Oh, Dougie, come on. <laughs> no more, Doug. All right, we'll sort that out during the break. More in just a moment.